Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, May 22nd, we're a continuation of our budget discussion uh, on capital. It's Friday afternoon. A beautiful looking day from, from in here. And uh, we will continue the discussion. So uh, I'll call the meeting to order and we'll do our uh, roundtable check to see who's with us. Uh, I'm not sure if Councillor Stretch has joined us yet. Yes, I'm here, uh, Your Worship. Sorry to be late. I forgot to plug my computer in yesterday. All right, well, good to see you. Councillor Hensby? I'm here, sir. Beautiful downtown Muscadabin Harbor at the railway station. Lots of people out today. Awesome. Councillor Karsten? Councillor Nichols? I'm here, not saying much because I want the community to, to, to keep going. Uh, Councilor Carson, I, I expect Councilor Carson is on the FCM call that I should be on right now. Councilor Austin. I'm here, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Mancini. Hello, Mr. Mayor. I am here from beautiful uh, Dartmouth. What are you doing? Thank you. Councilor Mason. Here, Mr. Mayor, on the back deck uh, in beautiful District 7. Awesome. Is that an actual shot? It is. Yeah, this is not a screen. This is real life back here. Jeez, that's nice. There's lots of trees still in downtown Halifax. Not bad. Councillor Smith. I'm here. Looking forward to today. The There's a 30-story tower in Ways Mason's backyard, and we made it through another week, so thank you. All in favor of that tower? Uh, Aye. <laughs> Councillor Cleary? Uh, good. Uh, is it still morning? No. Good afternoon, uh, Your Worship and Councillors. Um, beautiful District 9, Halifax West Armdale, looking at my window down Quinpool Road. <clears throat> I can see the gas sign. Uh, I don't know if the price has changed. It's 84 something cents there. Um, I do want to just take a second and thank the, the tremendously hardworking staff, especially in, in Transportation and Public Works and in our planning and development. I've had a number of conversations with some of the bid folks, at, at particularly Quinpool, the last few days, and uh, folks already out working with our small businesses and their business districts, looking at sidewalks, looking at roads, working with businesses, already trying to map out, uh, you know, how we can be helping them. So kudos to our staff who are out there doing that kind of work. That's a good point. And, you know, Tanya Davis is leading up a team that's really looking at how do we help in the reopening of these businesses. And I heard from a number of the bids about the work that she's doing uh, and so thank you for that councillor Cleary. Councillor Walker. Here Mr. Mayor. Councillor Adams. I'm here as well your worship. Councillor Zorowski. I am here as much as I can be Mr. Worship. <laughs> your worship Mr. Mayor. Uh, Lord for short. Councillor Whitman. Greetings Mayor Savage and colleagues. Greetings indeed. Deputy Mayor Blackburn. Hi there, everyone. Happy Friday from beautiful Beaverbank. Awesome. Councillor Russell. Good day uh, from uh, wonderful Lower Sackville. It is a sunny day out there and I'm just loving the weather and looking forward to getting out there just as soon as we're finished here. Awesome. Councillor uh, Outhead. <clears throat> Hello there. You're all here. And I'm here. Uh, just a warning for those who can see Councillor Mason, I'm getting reports of a lot of pigeon activity near your deck, uh, so you might want to put the uh, umbrella up, uh, Councillor Mason. Looking good, though. All right, colleagues, we're here to do the, the recast, so there's, there's a couple of things. Um, Jacques, I'm looking to you. Uh, would we do the shovel-ready projects first, uh, the, the proposed budget recast? We're continuing with that uh, work. Are there people that want to speak further on the budget, on, on the overall budget, before we look at the shovel ready? <coughs> Jacques? Uh, Certainly, any questions you may have, any remaining questions on the, on the capital budget, we're prepared to take now, and then we'd like to move into the shovel ready uh, report. All right. So do we need to uh, um, do we need to vote on the original motion before we go to the shovel ready, recognizing that we have a parking lot? Uh, do we do that now, or do we wait till we have the parking lot items come wait back? For the, wait for the parking lot, Mayor. Yeah. 
Mr. Mr. Mayor, it's Councillor Cleary. Um, I know we've been discussing capital, but in terms of uh, the stuff we were doing with the department by department, I do have a motion I'd like to bring forward uh, for transportation and public works. Would now be the time? Um, John, I think that would probably be in order, would it? Yes, certainly. Um, I'll type it in the uh, chat box as well, but essentially uh, my motion would be that Halifax Regional Council direct the CAO to maintain our membership in the National Association of City Transportation Officials, also known as NACDO, or uh, rejoin immediately if our membership has already lapsed. Second, Councillor Mason. So is that uh, for a parking lot, uh, Councillor Clary? Yes, it is, Your Worship. So to add that to the parking lot to come back for discussion. And as if people don't recall, it was 25,000 American for the membership. We did have a discussion about this. A number of councillors raised it. Shall we go to the question on that, colleagues? I have a question, it's Tim. Go ahead, Timmy. Councillor. Uh, when, uh, when this was brought forward, a number of associations and memberships and uh, things were cancelled so I'm just wondering we're, we're picking this one out but there were a number of other ones that were cancelled and my understanding was that it was felt that this one was quite expensive and that we uh, could continue to still get some benefits of their uh, their research and meetings but not so I'm just looking to Jacques or to Jane to say uh, what other ones were cancelled as well association memberships etc because I understand that this certainly wasn't the only one yeah, my, my sense is there's quite a few in a number of the departments that uh, take a long time to go through them. But Jock or Jane? Yeah, I, don't, I don't have a list, Mr. Mayor, in front of me of, uh, of all the ones that we have put set aside for this year. Uh, I don't know if Jane has that list or not. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. We didn't uh, track that information. Uh, it would be extensive. I know in uh, Finance Asset Management ICT, uh, we've reduced the Gartner contract, which is for IT support. It's, it's expensive. Um, some other uh, national organizations I belong to, um, we have kept memberships uh, that are required for professional accreditation for staff. Um, and I expect most uh, most business units have, have uh, taken the same route. Councilor Arthur, you're okay with that? Yeah, I just, and I'm not saying that NACTO isn't valuable but i am kind of looking at fairness here as well if other departments and other groups have lost membership we're kind of picking this one out and i'd like to understand a little bit more about that well mr mayor we would certainly bring back uh, all the information you require to make a decision in the in the, in the uh, supplemental report okay yes that's, that's fine thank you question that's fine thank you councillor austin on this Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I was wanting just to chime in on that point as well, that uh, I think when this, when we, if we vote to add it to the parking lot, I'd like to see what else we let, uh, that, we, that we're proposing to let lapse. Um, I think NACTO has a lot of value to us, given everything that we're doing um, regarding active transportation, road redesign, right down to pop-up COVID stuff. Uh, this is an area that as a municipality, we've moved quite considerably on in the last couple of years in terms of changing our thinking. And I think NACTO offers us a lot of benefits um, for what is a key priority right now. Um, so I really think we should, for, for the relatively minor cost, this is not one that I think we should let go of. So I, I very much support Councillor Clare's motion. Thank you. Councillor Zorowski. Um, I, I don't have anything specific to say to this. I, I think Councillor Cleary's uh, parking lot suggestion is a good one. It just, I, I have an overview question. Um, is this the place to start talking about um, parks and recs in terms of ur um, urban par park planning and money set aside for it? Or uh, is that more something to be considered in uh, the regional council meeting uh, when we look at uh, look at it from a budget constraint what i'm specifically looking at and again this has nothing to do with councillor cleary's motion but it's just it, in in general this this overview um i'm wondering about a plan for the blue mountain birch cove uh park area because it fits in critically to 
how we plan the urban greening and preservation of those park areas which are important to us and how that relates to fiscal planning. So I'm wondering, is this the place to discuss it or should it be brought up at regional council as a motion? Well, there is, there's a report. We're waiting on a report back, I think, aren't we? Uh, who's, who, who would know that? Uh, Denise, is, uh, Denise has to be a smile. Um, uh, so. so, yeah, Mr. Mayor, so in the, this is the reforecasting. Here's how I would approach it. This is the reforecasting of the, uh, of the budget. Operational presentations were done. Capital is now, we're in the midst of capital. When we presented our parks and recreation business plan, we outlined um, those park master plans that we are intending to do for the upcoming year. We have a, a, I guess, a running list of requests from councillors and the ones that we can fit in in, in any given year. So we, that's what we had presented um, when our February, I guess now maybe it feels like a long time ago now. Um, so I wouldn't, and then I wouldn't be, I wouldn't think that we would look to add to that list at this through this process since we're really just. It's a reforecasting of the budget that we had already presented. I would think that would be a separate, if, if we wanted to look at changing the business plan that uh, we had presented to council, I think we would look at doing that through a regional council motion. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I defer to the CFO if, if she would see anything different. I, I do think this is, is the reforecasting of the budget. We weren't looking to adjust the business plans through this process. I think that would be a separate process. Jane, I think that's right. Uh, it is, Mr. Mayor. Denise is, is correct as usual. Thank you, so, Everton. May I uh, uh, further clarification? So you're suggesting that anything that I would request of staff regarding Blue Mountain Birch Cove should be done in regional council, no matter what the budget constraints are that are being determined right now is, uh, uh, through the, budget, the revised budgetary process. Correct, Councillor, because it would be an adjustment to the business plan, so that wasn't included in the business plan. Council didn't ask us to put it in the business plan when we presented, so we would have to look at that through Council and how that impacts the Parks and Rec business plan and what that adjustment would need to be, because presumably, unless there was a change to the budget, we would have to look at taking something that Council did approve in the business plan out. Okay. Thank you very much for that clarification. I will be making a motion on that for, for council to take a look at uh, uh, the creation of some sort of uh, plan under this. So um, I, I will be talking with uh, both Denise and Jane about this and the CA, uh, CAO about how we might structure this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I support Council Cleary's motion and it uh, has a lot more to do with the politics of it, to be blunt. Uh, staff, uh, you know, seven years ago, eight years ago, did not want to join NACTO and discounted NACTO's uh, recommendations and, uh, and ethos uh, as uh, not being something that we needed or wanted here in Halifax. So it was actually very much a politically driven push to get NACTO recognized here. Uh, you know, I imagine we're not quitting TAC, but we're going to stay in NACTO, but we're going to quit NACTO. That's it's very uncomfortably with me. It was it was a joyous moment for uh, council and for many of our uh, young gung-ho staff when we joined NACTO and when they got to go to Toronto. I was hoping to meet a bunch of the staff there, but unfortunately Dorian happened and I didn't get to leave town uh, when the NACTO conference was in Toronto. Uh, that is an important point. The NACTO conference was in Toronto. Uh, this is something that Canadian cities have embraced as well, not just American cities. And I think it's a really important uh, lens for us to be looking at as we're rolling out IMP and meeting our uh, regional council goals. So I will support this for the parking lot. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor uh, Stretch. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, uh, I don't want to vote against Councillor Cleary again, so somebody has got to help me. I thought we uh, we discussed this uh, at length a day or two ago, and we made a decision uh, to go along and, and leave it out. Uh, so I've heard some uh, some comments today, but I'm kind of struggling as uh, our discussion over the last couple of days saw a lot of uh, things uh, uh, erased from this uh, potential budget that are going to affect uh, uh, my district in a big way, including our our capital, uh, our councillors' funds. Uh, I, I just need somebody to tell me what is different today 
than uh, two days ago when we talked about this, where we decided not to uh, activate this membership, Your Worship. Okay. So, Councillor uh, Councillor Cleary wants to close. Maybe he can address that in the close. Councillor Cleary. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so, a couple of things. Uh, it, as, as Councillor Mason said, it, it, it sat uncomfortably with a number of us. Uh, at the time, um, you know, there were lots of other things to discuss in our budget. And uh, when we went through the last few days of, of uh, you know, picking this to, to go off, uh, choosing this to stay on, uh, one of the things that became clear to me in how we're working as a municipality, particularly planning and development and transportation, working with our businesses, uh, and and doing that work, it, it's probably um, not just as Councillor Mason said, political in, in terms of setting a direction for our council because uh, NACTO is much more progressive and much more focused on the priority of pedestrians uh, ahead of vehicles. It's also the fact that yes, if we have um, you know our NACTO guides and and access to the research, that's one thing. But a membership in NACTO means we get to participate in the online discussions. It means we can be part of uh, the organization in terms of the COVID response, which believe it or not, NACTO has been amazing on. If you go to their website, there's tons of stuff and there's tons of invitations for members. And I stress that for members to participate in. If we're not a member, we can't participate in many of those activities. And so for our staff, as they're working through this incredibly tumultuous time, uh, being a member of NACTO means we'll have not only access to the historic research, we'll have access to current discussions and best practices around North America about how to actually help our businesses and, and uh, folks for mobility. So having, and that's why I brought it up now, uh, because it, it did sit uncomfortably and I do want us to be a member to take advantage of that. And it's one of those situations where I don't want to be uh, uh, penny wise and pound foolish. You know, giving up $25,000 American uh, isn't in our grand scheme of things a lot of money uh, where we're saving, you know, huge amounts uh, here and there. But it's one of those things, it could pay dividends 8, 10, 20, 30 times what it's worth in terms of safety of our uh, pedestrians and uh, the health of our small businesses as they uh, begin to stabilize and recover with COVID. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Walker with a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I guess it's one thing for Councillor Cleary to say this, but I guess I have to hear from the CAO on um, why it was cut and whether it should come back. <clears throat> so, Mr. Mayor, uh, the advice that we gave you is the advice we gave you. We haven't changed our view on that. Uh, Mr. Angus explained why it was taken out. Uh, we are a member of TAC. Uh, we have members, we have staff in planning and development and, and, uh, and in public works that have networks all across the world. And uh, whether we have a membership in NACTO this year or not, those, those networks are, are available to them. And, uh, you know, the vast majority of municipalities across the country, if I recall Brad's comments correctly, uh, are members of TAC. Uh, and, um, that is that is the go-to for, for 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 Canada for most Canadian cities in terms of transportation planning, transportation infrastructure tactics, uh, you know, certainly strategies around tactical urbanism and those kinds of things. So, you know, look uh, if there's so Brad's advice and certainly my advice uh, based on the based on the uh, submission uh, is that uh, we forego that this year it doesn't mean we come back we can come back to it another year, but for this year. We had to make deep cuts in order to hit the targets. That was one of those areas that we felt that we could do without for one year, uh, and uh, and come and review that matter and, and reconsider it uh, in in the upcoming year. So that's really the rationale. So the advice is the same today as it was uh, when we presented the budget to council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, folks. I see nobody else wishing to speak. We have a new boss at the helm today. Uh, Liam is uh, producing our show, and I'm going to ask Liam to call the roll. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Stretch. Thank you. Uh, with the advice of the CAO, I'm going to have to vote against the motion. Councillor Hensby. Negatory. 
Councillor Nickel? Yes, for the parking lot. Councillor Austin? In favor. Councillor Mancini? In favor of the motion. Councillor Mason? In favor. Councillor Smith? In favor. Councillor Cleary? Yes. Councillor Walker? Against. Councillor Adams? Against. Councillor Zarowski? For the motion. Councillor Whitman? Against. Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Blackburn? Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell? For the motion. Councillor Othin? Voting yes. And uh, Mayor Savage? For the motion. Eleven in favor. Eleven in favor, so the motion carries. Thank you, Councillor Cleary. Um, okay, are we ready to go to the uh, submission of shovel-ready projects? Yeah, my only comment, Mr. Mayor, I want to print off the report, and it's very difficult to read. It's very faint, and so there might be some difficulty in reading some of the lines, so I just want to let you know that up front. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor, do you want to put the motion on the floor? Sure thing. Um, let's see. I move that the Budget Committee 1 endorse the capital projects in Attachment A and B of the staff report dated May 21st, 2020, as well as the Halifax Regional Water Commission Shovel Ready projects attached to the staff report dated May 21st, 2020 for potential infrastructure potential and two, direct the Chief Administrative Officer to submit these projects for funding in the event a federal and or federal provincial infrastructure program is established. I so Council move. Councillor Nickel, second. Second by Councillor Nickel. Deputy Mayor, anything on it? Not at this time, just looking forward to the, uh, the conversation and uh, seeing what projects that we have ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jacques, was there anything you want to say about uh, this before we get into uh, further discussion? Well, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Um, the report pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, just sort of at a high level, I would say that, you know, we've looked at all our, our all our capital budgets, uh, all our projects across all the business units in the short term. What can we deliver this year, uh, both in, within HRM and with Halifax Water? And we've had had some conversations with the province. Uh, there's been some indication that perhaps there might be a, a stimulus program coming forward. Uh, this doesn't mean that we would only be relying on 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 a potential stimulus pro program for some of these projects. It just simply means that we are we we have been asked by the province to submit a, a list of shovel ready projects. Uh, I think it's important that we have council's endorsement of the list. That we're submitting formally. Uh, we also uh, have in the in the hopper uh, other projects that fall outside of this. As you know, we're we're going to be pursuing, and, and it's on the agenda for Tuesday, bus rapid transit and in the uh, electric bus file. Um, we also have a number of green projects that could be moved forward. So we've we've basically taken a look at all the shovel ready projects, categorized it. Uh, by uh, what's eligible uh, necessarily uh, in, in, under the current criteria, but also included a number of projects that are not currently eligible under existing in infrastructure programs. So that's sort of where we are. We would like to, um, we'd like councils to seriously consider this. Uh, give me, give us the endorsement so that we can advise the province that council has uh, officially endorsed this list. Over and, over and above that, we also have included in the list the, some of the um, projects that could be categorized under Halifax 2050, which is uh, which is an important uh, item that's coming before council. But there's about another nine million dollars worth of projects there that could be uh, considered under this particular um, initiative. So, Jane, anything you want to add? 
thank you, Jacques. Uh, no, that uh, that does cover it. The only thing that um, I would add is that there were two um, project applications that have already been submitted. Uh, one was the Beachville Lakeside Timberley uh, Recreation Project, and the other one is the Sheet Harbor um, Lifestyle uh, uh, Project as well. We submitted those last Friday. Uh, to the province through transportation infrastructure renewal, and when I when the report was written, I neglected to say that those uh, those applications had already been submitted. Okay, thank you. Well, let's go to the floor, Councillor Zarowski. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you, Jacques and Jane, for uh, the summary. And and Jane, thank you very much for uh, mentioning. Uh, Beachville Lakeside Timberley Community Centre. I was going to ask about the specifics of it and in terms of its shovel readiness and in terms of its qualifying, will it now go back on the list? Do we have to put it on a, um, a parking lot consideration or will it automatically just go into our uh, plans for the future over the next three years? Uh, so, Mr. Mayor, through you to the councillor. So, that project has already been approved by uh, regional council, subject to uh, federal cost sharing. So, uh, the report's gone through. If there's federal cost sharing, it will be um, will, it will become part of the capital budget process. Uh, it it was put it was uh, scheduled for later. I think maybe year four or five. Um, so, if there is federal uh, cost sharing, federal provincial cost sharing, we will move it forward and come back with funding for it. All right, thank you. Um, that takes care of uh, the BLT Community Center, and I thank you for that, and thank you for submitting um, so quickly. I know it was hurried given uh, all the foo with the COVID crisis and, and doing the budgets, and in spite of that, you were able to get that project into the province. So uh, kudos to, to you and your staff for doing that. Um, the Halifax 2050, I'm really happy to hear that we're eligible for funding. Could you give me a summary of where we are with it and, and how the federal funding will affect the implementation of Halifax 2050? Well, the only thing I would say, Mr. Mayor, on that is uh, in, the lit, on the, in the project list of the shovel ready, you, you'll see a, bunch, a number of projects there, energy efficiency projects, et cetera. Uh, certainly as if we can get federal and provincial funding, that will certainly accelerate our investments, right? And uh, allow us to do more in a shorter time frame. So certainly it would be a big help. We've got some additional funding there uh, going forward. And we, as you know, uh, we council had, had, uh, had allowed a certain amount of money in the capital budget on allocated monies. Um, I think almost $6 million over three years. Uh, this would then bring in another uh, some of the money that we could actually accelerate some of the work that we're doing. So as when Halifax 2050 is presented to council in June, uh, there'll be a number of initiatives in there that we will want, um, certainly will want uh, council to endorse and uh, hopefully we'll have some positive uh, decisions out of the federal provincial government in relation to some of the projects that we're advancing, not only under shovel ready, but as we go forward into the next few years. So we're really looking at this from shovel ready this year and what's what can we do in, in years two, three, four and five. So we'd really like to get some commitments from the federal and provincial governments on years two, three, four and five as well. And those are those are those those some of those are, are actually enumerated in the capital budget and some may be uh, accelerated with, with additional funding from the other levels of government. OK, well, thank you for that. And uh, as I look at this, uh, we haven't had a whole lot of a chance to go through it, but I see a number of energy efficiency initiatives. Those are the ones you're, I take it you're uh, speaking to specifically. Uh, when the Halifax 2050 comes to council, we'll be able to see in detail um, what those projects are and what uh, uh, staff is recommending to us. I take that. Yes, we'll certainly provide you with more detail around those projects uh, should do you so wish, absolutely. And any any funding that we receive from the federal and provincial governments has to come back to council for acceptance and the details will then be di di discussed with council before you actually approve the funding. Because the, the actual acceptance of any federal provincial funding has to come from council. 
and I guess Thank you, Jacques. Uh, Mr. Mayor, do I have any time left or do I have to come back? Uh, you have no time left, but you don't have to come back, but your call. <laughs> I know you, your feelings will be hurt if I don't, though. I look forward to hearing you again. Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot on the main list because, I mean, they're all things that are primarily in the budget already. It's just us prioritizing what we want to uh, submit for funding. Um, the Halifax stuff I wanted to touch on again, uh, following on Councillor Zorowski. Um, the uh, energy efficiency stuff, I mean, I think what I, I'm really looking forward to seeing the plan um, in June. I think there's an opportunity with the energy efficiency stuff, um, whether it gets funding or not, to treat it sort of like we did with the street light lighting, because a lot of the energy efficiency stuff, um, there's an upfront cost, but then you save over the long term. So we should be able to, I mean, I know this year is a challenging year, but as we move back into some sort of normal, we should be able to do things in a reserve sort of case where you're drawing money, but then you're getting that paid back over time. Um, uh, one, one of the big ones potentially is the federal provincial government, um, the push by the feds to go clean renewable for the civil service. Uh, I think there's some wonderful opportunity potentially for us in that in terms of uh, you know, greening our own uh, energy needs. Um, so that that's that that's good. Uh, I'm glad we're submitting it. Uh, the piece that I did wanted to speak to. Um, I'm glad to see the Halifax Water Lake Major um, putting a, more, a flexible pipe in there for the water intake because uh, you know we've had some dry summers in Dartmouth over the last couple of years. I know we the new dam helps because it gives several more inches of water. But um, uh, addressing that intake pipe is really good. The piece that uh, I wanted I did have just want to highlight for colleagues and I did have one question for staff on uh, the very very last page and you know never waste a moment in politics right um, the piece that we moved to the parking lot the other day our section of the sawmill river project well there it is on Halifax water submission for the next three years uh, the total that Halifax Water is looking at is $14.8 million. Uh, if we can get funding on that because we've done our work to get our things shovel ready, I mean, that's uh, there, there's potentially some major savings for um, ratepayers, which are also our taxpayers um, in this. So um, my question just for staff on that, I mean, the Halifax Water's got that in their timeline, um, but we still have work to do. Um, I, I presume if we got funding, we, we could scramble to get that ready, like the, the last bits of design to work out. I don't know if Peter Duncan's on the call or Kelly. Who wants that one? Um, I, I, am, I am here. It's uh, Peter Duncan. I, can, I think I can answer that question. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, good afternoon. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the councillor. So, um, I spoke with Jamie Hannum of Halifax Water this morning, and our schedule aligns with their schedule if we had funding. So, what we would do is this year we would uh, work to get a tender package out, this year being 2020. We would uh, work to acquire the land and get a tender package out. Our our design for the Dundas Street Bridge is about 90% done now. And at the same time as we're doing that, Halifax Water would initiate their uh, design for phase two of the Sullivan's Pond Storm Sewer. Uh, we would move to construction of the Dundas Street Bridge in 2021. And as soon as we were finished that, Halifax Water would uh, tightly follow us and begin the their work um, after we had finished our work both in 2021 and then they would complete their work in 2022. Okay, thank you for that, Peter. Uh, I, I think this is this is one that um, you know I, personally my own hunch is that we have a high likelihood of getting funding for considering that it was funded in the first round and the response to it is not just a pipe underground it's that creating uh, it's, it's climate change adaptation it's environmental work by getting the weed fishies back into habitat that they've been cut off from uh, when the when the former infrastructure minister came on a tour for, I know our uh, with our MP and Halifax water staff. I mean, he, he, he wanted to sign a check on the spot pretty much, except, you know, programs and that weren't, weren't in place. So I think there's a very high likelihood of funding this. So I just wanted to draw attention to that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mancini. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Is anyone from Halifax water on, on with us today, Mr. Mayor? 
I don't know. Jock is Kathy's not with us, is she? And Kathy uh, is here, and Jamie Hannum's here also. I got the whole brain trust. Thank you, guys. Uh, go ahead, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Jamie and Kathy, good afternoon. Um, uh, my question is a similar question I asked about before, Kathy, last time we chatted, is with regard to the Ellenvale Run project. Phase four was supposed to happen this year in, in Woodlawn. Uh, so my understanding that's being delayed. So it, where does that stand for 2021 in that project? So I'm going to turn that one over to Jamie. My understanding, though, at a high level, is that the delay is not necessarily related to money. Sorry, Jamie, uh, are you able to jump in? I'm sorry, I just uh, lost you for a second there, uh, Kathy. <laughs> what was that again? I My am able to jump in, Kathy. Great. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon. It's Jamie Hannum with Halifax Water. Yeah, the current Ellenvale Run project uh, the hold up on it is the provincial and federal regulators are holding off completing the permitting process, wanting to see some of the outputs of the earlier phases, some of the required adjustments to the earlier phases to ascertain themselves that the things that went in place to correct and promote fish habitat in the first three phases were exactly effective and that some of the suggested minor adjustments will correct some of what they believe was a deficiency and then roll that into phase four. Unfortunately, that bit of timing as it links to when we can do work in the water and make those improvements and then have the regulators monitor that success is unfortunately may push us past this construction season to do the hard civil work of, uh, of the phase four. So the funding is in place, the contractor is in place. We just are working through this necessary regulatory piece. And I think in the long term, if we can get the provincial and federal regulators very happy with the fish habitat, where they're essentially happy now and just wants some minor adjustments, it will pave well for the balance of that project. So we're working hard to um, get the regulators in play. It may allow us to complete the work later this year. It may push the work into early next year at the latest. So, uh, and the chances of happening this year is probably unlikely. So that will get as much as a guarantee as possible, Jamie and Kathy. That'll be on the list for your projects in 2021. Yes, it won't have to be rebudgeted. It will just stay as a deferred project from this year's funding. So yes, it's in play as soon as we can get permits and align with a clean construction window. We will proceed. Has communication play uh, taken place with the residents of that area? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure of the exact timing. I think whether we're waiting for a little bit more information, but as you know, we've been very close with our correspondence with those folks. And as soon as we have a certain message for the near term, we'll be providing them with full information on that. Uh, Jamie and Kathy, thank you very much. I uh, truly appreciate it. Mr. Mayor, thank you, sir. Thank you. Councilman Mason. Well, I had originally, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd originally come on just because I wasn't sure if uh, uh, Sam would highlight uh, the importance of uh, Alderney or not the uh, and the uh, Dundas Street project uh, being a, a classy fellow that he is. Uh, I, I just wanted to say also, I think this is a great list. Uh, the Halifax Water and Halifax HRM list, uh, you know, these are a lot of the things that, that we uh, uh, need to do environmentally in terms of transportation and in terms of uh, transit support, uh, things that are, are uh, you know, that our communities, that our residents are really looking forward to that are at risk because of the uh, budget impacts of COVID. So I guess my question for the CAO and for staff is, uh, how do we see this playing out? Like, I know this is a request of the province to give them a list, but some do, do we have any indication of what kind of program and timeline we might have for this? Uh, you know, obviously construction season starts now, and uh, some of this could be uh, funded through special uh, special funding. It's only, you know, only $60 million. It could be a special project. It could be a uh, gas tax. It could be uh, for much of it that they simply open the bilateral and we can access the transit and green funding that already exists. Do we have an idea what the timelines are and what the funding sources might be, or is it still unknown at this time? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Councillor, uh, it's largely unknown at this time. There's been a lot of uh, speculation as to what programs might be, how they may be repackaged, reformatted, uh, a new a new program called a uh, you know COVID nineteen stimulus fund or something like that, with different cost sharing arrangements uh, in it. 
uh, but there's been no decisions uh, out of Ottawa or the province yet. I know that there's an active, certainly active uh, conversations going on between the province and the federal government on this. Uh, and there's certainly active conversations between us and the province because, uh, you know, certainly our projects have to be approved by the province, submitted by the province to the federal government for consideration. So the, that conversation is ongoing. Uh, I know the mayor uh, has been having lots of conversations uh, at the political level and uh, certainly uh, SDM as well under the leadership of Councillor Carson has been having a lot of conversations with the federal government on in a variety of fronts, including repackaging existing programs, uh, perhaps uh, some form of uh, direct transfer from the federal government to municipalities. So there's a whole variety of things that are being uh, discussed, uh, but nothing has been cast in stone yet. Uh, the fact that we've been asked to submit a list is a good sign to the extent that I'm sure they want to make decisions uh, soon. We do need decisions soon because uh, many of these projects are in tendering processes now. Uh, of course, once they're awarded, they're no longer eligible normally for, for, for approval. So to your point, you're bang on. We need to we need to get these things moving. We need to get the economy moving and uh, you know, we can't wait for forever. Um, can't wait till July, for example, or June or the or the uh, you know, middle of June, for example, to get answers on these things because we need to move on these projects uh, to get things moving. So um, that's where we are. Thank you. Thank you for that. Scenario. Just to reinforce, you know, to any of the uh, provincial or federal politicians or staffers who are watching, uh, you know, this is very, very tight timeline for us, and I hope that they can respond. Uh, Brad English talked about how if we close those last uh, uh, land purchase uh, agreements that are apparently very close. Uh, Cogswell could result in 400 jobs ongoing for the next couple of years, just that that alone. So, so when I look at this $60 million, this enables hundreds of jobs and, and significant cash flow when we get to recovery. And certainly what I've been hearing from the uh, prime contractors, you get a lot of our construction, is that if that money doesn't keep flowing, a lot of subcontractors in trades are going to struggle to stay in business. So I, I do hope that uh, the feds in the province are listening and that this comes forward very quickly. Uh, in, and it's got to be days and weeks. It can't be months. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Indeed. Thank you very much, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, this is a question to Jacques, and it's there's two ways to answer this. One, uh, what, what's the shorter list? The eligibility requirements or the uh, components that would make a project ineligible? And whatever shorter, you can answer it in that manner. Yeah. Um. I shouldn't have given him a choice. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the question through you, Mr. Mayor, to the councillor. Uh, I, I look, uh, at the end of the day, what we know today is the eligibility criteria on existing programs, right? So that typically involves green infrastructure, that typically involves uh, buildings, uh, under, under recreation buildings, for example. Uh, you know, we've had uh, major transportation plays like the Windsor Street Exchange, those kinds of things. So those are the, the current eligibility. Many uh, of our projects that are on the list would qualify. There's many projects on the list, however, that would not qualify under, under existing rules. Uh, for example, um, investments in fire stations uh, would be one that would not be an eligible, not be eligible currently. So um, what we're hoping for, frankly, is that, and there's been some conversations about that, I understand that the eligibility criteria may be get loosened up under a new, a new program uh, along with uh, different, different contribution levels by each partner. So, you know, we're, it's, a, it's a work in progress. We're just gonna wait and see what, that, what, what comes out of that. Uh, I'm quite confident that we will get some, some, some support uh, in, in some fashion of whether it's under an existing program or should there be a new program, we'll likely get some support there too. Because obviously, HRM being half of the province, um, you know, we on, just on PTIF alone, we uh, we, we get 96.4% of the PTIF allocation across Nova Scotia. So I would expect if there's um, funding for things around transportation, uh, that we would get a significant percentage of, of the share that would be applied to Nova Scotia. Question, the, only, the, the magic in this is how, what will be the criteria going forward under any new programs and how would it, would, how would it be dispersed, right? We're in, a, we're in a fairly good position that we can actually afford to come up with our share. 
and on many of these pro projects, right? So we, it's all been worked out and council's already endorsed many projects on the capital budget. We know we have a certain amount of capacity to borrow and we have capital operating and reserves and things. So we can actually leverage this funding. And as the mayor always points out, you know, if there's a project comes out that is, um, that will leverage other levels of government, we'll always figure, probably figure out a way to get, to get, the, to get our share lined up as well, right? So Jane's pretty clever when it comes to moving money around and uh, and figuring out how to fund things. So um, I'm pretty confident that we'll get some good support there. Maybe a longer answer you're looking for, but that's the answer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. You're good, Steve. Thank you. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, two very quick questions. The first one for Denise, the second one for Brad. Uh, the first one for Denise, I see under uh, project name Park Recapitalization, Design, Build, Playground, Development, 11 Parks, and just wondering if Waterstone Subdivision Park is on that list. And then the question for Brad, um, I know that we've got uh, some leftover work still at uh, Rosley Road in Beaverbank and wondering if uh, any of these budget adjustments will impact that uh, leftover work that's due to be completed uh, this summer. Thank you. Brad, you there? Brad is, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Brad is off today, but Tasso and Dave Hubley, I believe, are available to answer questions on behalf of TPW. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry about that. Hi, uh, Dave Hubley here. Can you hear me okay? Hey, yeah, Dave. we got you, bud. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Sorry, through you to the councillor. So, Rosie Road, we had um, we attempted that last year. Recall, so that includes the bridge and the paving piece of it. And the gravel road portion of it, uh, I, I think that was included as well, but I have to double check that, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be impacted on this particular issue. Okay, and Denise on the uh, playgrounds. Sorry, Deputy Mayor, mm -hmm. slow on, on, on the buttons. Um, so that that is our, our list and I'm just uh, flipping through my pages here, I believe that is uh, is um, in our new list for 2020, but I'm just going to double check here on my list and uh, we'll sure. send you a quick note. All right, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I see nobody else on the list. Are we ready for the question? Question. Uh, uh, Merrick's Merrick's Tim. I did send in. Uh, I'm having trouble with chat, but I did want to speak for a moment. Yeah, me too. I put my name there too, Lindell. Okay. Come go ahead, Councillor Arthur. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, a couple of people that will have to respond to this one. So, uh, starting with Peter. So, Peter, the roundabout in West Bedford, uh, we're adding that to uh, this list. Uh, if it doesn't make this list, there's also a chance of some financing with uh, through the uh, developers as well. But I'd like you to speak to the roundabout just for a moment. Uh, uh, I don't know if Dave Hubley is, uh, sorry, not Dave Hubley, Dave Ridgey is on the line. But, uh, maybe, uh, maybe Jacques, you should address this. Our shovel ready projects and federal funding. I'm just wondering how this compares with PPIP because, as you know, I'm very worried about the West Bedford uh, parking lot, which I understand is in our budget for next year, but is there not an opportunity to move it up sooner with some federal funding? And the same with uh, next week, we're going to see BRT and ferries coming forward. We're going to see the Bedford uh, Highway functional plan coming forward. Is there not an opportunity? Through PTIF or through this anticipated new funding for some help for these projects as well. If we didn't submit this list until we knew more about guarantee and area, as to say, the highway function. And then I've got a question for how much water about blue water at Thomas Plains Road and that flooding project there. So maybe, Peter, if you could start with Roundabout and Jacques, just give me a little comfort that there's still going to be other funding available or opportunities for BRT and for the Bedford Highway. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll com make comment on the roundabout first. Um, that's something that we have included on the list. Uh, yes. Any details associated with that project, I would rather go in camera to discuss, frankly, um, okay. because of the sensitive contractual nature of that. Um, yeah. But uh, it is on the list, and we were we we're hopeful to get some funding there, and, and that will effectively uh, be a 
good investment, I think, for the community and a public-private kind of partnership arrangement. If you anymore, anyone want any more detail or answers on that, I'd rather go on camera at this point. Understood. Uh, for bus rapid transit and the and the electric buses, um, we're anticipating. Uh, we have a plan going before you on Tuesday that basically represents seven to eight hundred million dollars worth of investment over about eight years, eight to ten years, I suppose. And uh, you know they so that that funding or those projects we anticipate um, we will be considered under PTIF. If you recall, uh, PTIF uh, has about $525 million left in it when you, can f when you factor in the provincial, federal and municipal share of PTIF around that. So uh, we also, there's also monies in green, in the green fund. Well, I don't know exactly the number that remains in the green fund, but between PTIF and green, we, we expect that we should be able to get some level of funding to start that process. Uh, you'll see there's a very detailed report that was sent to council today and put up on the web on bus rapid transit and, and e-bus um, or electric buses and uh, it also implies uh, changes to, to regional transit rates as well going forward. So between you know infrastructure cost sharing and uh, an adjustment to the transit rate uh, for both residents and uh, commercial uh, this this is quite feasible, uh, we believe, uh, but it'll take a decision of council on Tuesday. Uh, and then from there, we will uh, pursue applications under PTIF, under the normal PTIF program. Now, depending on the nature of any stimulus funds, uh, and when, if and when they get announced and what the criteria might be, there might be some things in there that could, in the, uh, in the bus rapid transit and the, and the uh, electrification of our fleet, that may well be considered under that fund as well. So we'll have to see how that plays out, but that's where we are with that. Um, I think that's all I had to say on those two items for the moment. Okay, I have a fifth of highway uh, functional plan, and then I had a question about the Heavens Plains Road, but is it the same idea with Bedford Highway functional plan? Jacques, do you feel there's other uh, opportunities coming forward for shared funding? Yeah, it's all, it's all worked into the, uh, all well, worked into that. The functional plan is going forward before council as well, so there'll, there'll be opportunities for applications to the other levels of government for uh, some of those thanks. things, including loose trails and and uh, bus laybys and a variety of things. Right. All right. And my last question was: I think Dave Hughley might be able to take this, or maybe Kathy from the Halifax Water. I'm wondering if there's not an opportunity for the ongoing flooding problem on the Hammonds Plains Road at Blue Water, which I understand was going to tender. Maybe it's too, maybe miss a boat on that. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, through to the councillor, we we completed the, the study uh, with our consultants and going through some of the options. Um, the report for all intents and purposes is is finalized and the next step is to uh, to get in more into the detailed design and, uh, and decide on the options. So that work hasn't started yet, um, but it's something that the uh, we have a what's called a, a five year transportation capital committee. And that's one of the of the many projects that we're going through right now to try to uh, determine a schedule for that and the costing. OK, I, my understanding was that it was further along and are we missing an opportunity by not moving this a little faster? Uh, it's a busy road, but it gets a lot of flooding. Are we not missing an opportunity here to try and move this faster to the design and shovel ready stage? Well, I don't know if Peter Duncan is on the line to, to speak to it as well, but um, yeah, it's, it's certainly, as I said, the report is completed. Uh, just, we've got a lot of priorities right now and uh, just trying to uh, to identify what, what the top priorities are and um, this is certainly one that's been around for a while as you mentioned um, but we just I think we just need a bit more time to try to uh, try to schedule it in. Okay I just hope this is an opportunity for some financial help. Well I, there's, there's still <laughs> we're not at the detailed design stage yet that that will take some time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Smith. Uh, 
Thank you, Mayor. Two, two cool, or three, three questions. One's a general question. So anything, and maybe this is for Jacques. So I'm wondering, when we look at our budget adjustment list previously, some of the projects that were uh, on that list, some that have been adjusted in, 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 I guess, removed from the budget and some are not. Do, does that list change at all if we get this money? Obviously, we don't know what projects we would receive, but does that list change at all if we do receive some? Then I have a question related to that. Um, <clears throat> I think I think the short answer, and I, I would ask Jane perhaps to comment as well, but I think the short answer is per, potentially. Um, what, what happens here is that, you know, as you know, we had uh, booked $25 million in capital from operating. So the question then becomes, if we get federal and provincial funding, uh, do we do we adjust that further? Because we had upwards of 45 million in, in capital operating. We reduced it down to 25 as a result of the budget, uh, consider the new budget considerations. Uh, the question is whether we would drop that further if we got other funding, or uh, we, would we have a mix of, you know, perhaps uh, taking less from reserves and uh, as, as an option or a mix of both, right? So this would all come back to council. Um, as Jane would always, always said, it's awful lot easier to add add things in than it is to take things out. So if we got additional funding, we go back to council and we would have advice, provide advice to council as to what you might want to adjust both in terms of calcium operating reserves or adding, just simply adding more things more expenditure items that you may want to entertain at that time, right? So you may there may be some things on the budget adjustment list that does that does not pass that you may want to reconsider should additional resources come forward. So so on on that point, just to get an understanding. So one of them for me is the Fort Needham washrooms. So yesterday uh, on on or whatever day, I don't know what date is right now. Um, but previously, when we we discussed it, Needham was the Needham bathroom, which was five hundred and fifty thousand for our end of the of the cost to that. We're on the list that we're speaking on today has uh, eight hundred. So if we were to get the funding for that, would we then, as you said, just add back in that our portion of the five hundred and fifty or or like, how would that work? Jane, perhaps you can get in on that one, or Denise. So uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, through you to, to the councillor. So uh, councillor, what we would do is we would look at the funding sources. So what that, um, if we received uh, two thirds cost sharing on Fort Needham, which is on the list, at, as you said, at 800, what that does is that frees up, um, you know, close to $560,000. Um, so then we would we would substitute that that funding that way. So it's the way that we um, use the cost sharing. The um, the only other thing that I would add to the CAO's explanation, which was was very good, is that there's also opportunity um, with funding from the federal government for projects that um, we had to shift to years two or three in the capital plan uh, due to funding constraints to maybe accelerate some of those. So what this would do is give us a lot of flexibility um, on the way that we run both our capital and then um, maybe some of the operating as well because it would free up uh, room. Okay, great. So uh, my last question was addressed by another councillor, so I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, ready for the vote uh, on uh, the submission of shovel-ready projects for potential stimulus. Uh, Liam, do you want to? Take us on the vote. Councillor Stretch. Uh, for the motion. Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Councillor Nickel. Yes. Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. For the motion. Councillor Mason. For the motion. Councillor Smith. For the motion. Councillor Cleary. Yes. Councillor Walker. For. Councillor Adams. For. 
Councillor Zorowski. Richard, you're sharing your screen. Yeah. Ooh. What's that website? <laughs> so click the button next to it, the one with the X on it. I'm trying. There, there thank you. you. OK, for the motion. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Whitman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Blackburn? Voting yes on the motion. Councillor Russell? For the motion. Councillor Othit? Yes. Mayor Savage? Yes. So that motion carries um, unanimously. Thank you, colleagues. Um, all right. Is there any other business before us today? I think we uh, carry forward the um, the uh, item three to next week. Um, our next council meeting, our next budget meeting and council meeting are both, I believe, on Tuesday. So uh, the 26th of May. We have a budget meeting starting at 10 o'clock in the uh, morning and then council. Uh, Jacques, I think that's it for today. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I think we're done. I think, they, uh, I think some uh, sociables are in order. Sociable. I'd like to. Uh, Outside. I'd like to Outside. thank. Uh, staff uh, for their work on this. It's uh, a lot of work and uh, very important work. So thank you very much to Jacques, to Jane and your entire team and all the folks who uh, who joined us. Um, so I think it's time to uh, go outside. What's that say, Deputy? Sign. 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 <laughs> go get some. <laughs> all right, colleagues, I'll accept a motion to adjourn from Councillor Mason. Mitchell. And wear your sunscreen. Great. <laughs> Enjoy the weekend, everyone. See you later, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.